Hi, this is the National Weather Service Office in Medford, Oregon, with a weather, water, and climate update for March 28, 2022. We've been a little hesitant to create a video lately about the weather and climate, uh, snowpack status, because there's plenty of bad news and we didn't really want to add to it. However, we do think that this information is important enough to share. And also, there are some things we can do actively uh, to um, prepare for potential uh, significant wildfire season and uh, actually help uh, improve our area in terms of uh, water supply or fire season. So we're going to talk a little bit about wildfire stats for our specific forecast area, discuss some preparation for wildfire season, and then also uh, some safety messaging. First, the drought status. You can see here that a, everywhere in our forecast area is experiencing drought, and uh, much of the area is an extreme or exceptional drought. Here's the precipitation we've received during the past 90 days. As you can see, percent of normal since generally January through March is anywhere from 5% of normal to 50% of normal for much of the forecast area. So it's been abysmal in terms of precipitation across the forecast area compared to normal. Now we're going to take a peek at our website here and look at a little more climate data. So it's weather.gov forward slash Medford or MFR. We're going to go down to the precipitation tracker and take a peek at things here. So these are our climate sites across our nine county forecast area. And you can see that um, most or all of them are well below normal, at least 25% below normal. North Bend is the closest to normal at 25% below normal. And Mount Shasta City is the furthest away from normal at about 50% below normal. And again, this is since October 1st, so water year precipitation. Now, you might remember back in October, we created these gauges to kind of track the amount of precipitation across our area relative to what it would take to significantly improve or even erase the drought. Just using a few figures, drought encompasses more than just precipitation at, at specific sites, but we thought this would give a good idea. So here's what they look. Remember, this is how close are we needed how close are we to precipitation needed by April 1st, which we're almost there to significantly improve the drought? And you can see the, uh, the gauge with the most progress is North Bend at the coast, but most gauges are barely, uh, you know, green is the area where it could significantly improve or erase the drought, and we're nowhere near green for any of our climate sites, unfortunately. Now let's take a look at snowpack. So we're going to go to the snowfall in depth with Crater Lake details, and we'll first take a peek at just the, the big map. Click on that link, and you'll see this is snow water equivalent. So how much water is in the snowpack for southern Oregon and northern California? You can see 23% to maybe 50% of normal, so, so very low. Now we're going to go to someplace a little more familiar, Crater Lake a little more specific, and take a peek at Crater Lake. So this tells the season very well in terms of some snow events in the fall, big, long period of little to no snow in late November to early December, and then late December, early January, that's where we bumped above normal. Things looked good. And then the drought, snow drought there for basically through from early January through today. Today is about when we on average, peak at uh, snow depth at Crater Lake of about 105 inches on average. 
and we are at 42 inches, so less than half of what we typically see in snow depth at Crater Lake right now. So now that we've looked at some of the current and the status of water, are we getting any more water? Is anything else coming? And again, I wish I had good news, but I don't. Here is the next potential for rain, Sunday through Tuesday, April 3rd through 5th. This shows the percent chance of a quarter inch or more during that time frame, during that 72 hour time frame. And you can see Medford's 25% chance, Lake County generally very little, Lakeview 3% chance, go to the coast close to 80% chance of a quarter inch. So some potential for rain there, but again, the models are very split. And so far this winter, the models have suggested a lot of rain that has not occurred in the extended. So take this with a grain of salt. Now, looking at the eight to 14 day outlook, uh, the probabilities suggest enhanced chances for above normal temperatures for our region and below normal precipitations to near normal precipitation for the kind of broad area. So even if we do get that rain April 3rd through 5th, doesn't look like it's gonna be a sustained significant wet period. Now we've talked a good bit about uh, what we expect in terms of weather so and what we've had. So how does all this dry weather impact the upcoming fire season? A lot of people ask this question. We get this quite frequently. Well, we're just going to speak to the fact that hot, dry, and windy conditions make fires worse. And we've seen the dry, uh, and that's likely going to yield drier vegetation or fuels this, this summer. and, and plenty of low humidity days. But here's a reminder that fire seasons are only bad when you have fire starts. So fires are started by humans and lightning. I, we want to amplify some of our partner agency messaging like this, one less spark, one less wildfire, meaning we can help contribute to the reduction of wildfires in our area. So we're going to now just take a peek at what causes wildfires in our forecast area, nine county forecast area. And again, this is taken from the National Interagency Fire Occurrence Database. It suggests that about 43% of all wildfires in our forecast area, Southern Oregon, Northern California, are caused by humans. And you can see the, the list of uh, different types of equipment use, broad area of miscellaneous, debris burning, campfires, and so, so on and so forth. So with that in mind, that there are a lot of human-caused fires in our area, we want to try to reduce that, right? We have the power to reduce that. Each person has some power in doing that. So here are some ways you can reduce uh, or prevent wildfires. So first, you know, just I'm not going to read them out to you, but uh, anything that causes a spark, you know, be very wary of that, especially this season, as we're already dry now uh, in terms of weather, very had dry year. So, uh, you know, our, our really dry season is upcoming. And call 911 if you see a new wildfire. Okay, so we've, we've noted that fires are started by humans, but they're also started by lightning. And this is directly ties into our mission of uh, helping to save lives and property through the issuance of timely and accurate forecasts and warnings. And our job is to work with other, with our partner agencies, land management agencies, and provide them forecasts and warnings that they can use ahead of and during significant lightning events to help mitigate uh, lightning being a large cause of fires, to help these agencies be aware of lightning events ahead of time. So that is one huge job uh, that we work really hard at here at the Medford National Weather Service office. Here is a lightning map showing the lightning 
flash density across the forecast area. Those nine counties I talked about, that's our forecast area, Southern Oregon and Northern California. You can see uh, lightning can occur anywhere in our forecast area from the ocean waters um, and east into Lake and Modoc counties. The focal areas, the most lightning occurs where you see the dark purple. So central Siskiyou County, specifically near Fort Jones or Highway 3 at Forest Mountain Summit, uh, northern Klamath County, kind of northeast of Shamal, and then southeastern Modoc County. Those are kind of our hot spots in terms of lightning throughout the year. Of course, most of that occurring during the summer. So we've talked about uh, human-caused uh, fires, some lightning-caused or lightning in, in our forecast area. Now we want to just, again, kind of amplify some of our partner agency messaging. If you go to readyforwildfire.org, they have a lot of good information. This is just one here in terms of, you know, if uh, to, to do now, so something you can do now, create defensible space uh, around your home. And that's to help uh, prevent those flames from Im impacting your home and, and uh, prevent the fire from spreading further, right? And we can prepare for smoke now, right? If, if, if we, unfortunately, if, if we have the unfortunate event of wildfires bringing smoke into our communities, here's some things you can do now to kind of prepare. Uh, MERV 13 plus air filters, the higher the, the rating, the higher uh, particulates it filters out, air cleaners and N95 masks. So consider those now. And that does it for this, uh, this update. Uh, thanks for listening and stay tuned. We'll create more, uh, more informational videos in the future.